Myself, Dr. Pavia Shet, second year resident doctor in the Department of Radio Diagnosis at Siusha Medical College, Surandhanagar. Here I am present a case in the case of the week series under the guidance of Dr. Harshad Sasak and Dr. Nirmala Chudasama Ma'am. 22-year-old male patient came to our department for USG neck with chief complaints of swelling on right side of neck since 8 months associated with pain during chewing, no history of cough, cold, fever, diabetes and hypertension. Images in the slide shows well-defined oval heterogeneously hypoechoic lesions with few cystic spaces within it. On color Doppler, the lesion shows internal vascularity within it. In the video, you can see well-defined oval heterogeneous hypoechoic lesion with few cystic spaces within it. You can see well-defined lesion located in the right carotid space. The lesion seems to be causing anterior displacement of the right internal carotid artery and the right external carotid artery. The lesion appears iso-intense on T1-weighted images and hyper-intense on T2-weighted images. In the video, you can see a well-defined lesion located in the right carotid space causing the displacement of right internal carotid and external carotid artery anteriorly. Sagittal T1 and T2-weighted images shows well-defined lesion in right carotid space. Coronal, axial and sagittal sections showing the lesion in the right carotid space. Here shows soft tissue window of CT neck showing well-defined hypodense lesion located in the right carotid space and it seems to be causing anterior displacement of the right internal carotid artery and the right external carotid artery. Axial CT scan brain window shows well-defined hypodense lesion located in the right carotid space. Histopathological examination shows sheets of spindle cells with mild cytological atypia which shows nuclear palisading pattern arranged in rows known as Verruchi bodies and antennae areas A. Cells are elongated having coma-shaped nuclei. Hypocellular areas also known as antennae areas B are seen in mixed stroma. Finding suggestive of nerve sheet tumor schwannoma. So, my final diagnosis is right-sided carotid space vagal schwannoma. Cranial nerve schwannoma are rare benign encapsulated tumors of the Schwann cells that wrap around their parent nerve. Although all final four cranial nerves could be involved, vagal schwannomas are the most common. Typically, the patients are middle-aged with an asymptomatic palpable cervical mass. If present, symptoms are non-specific and due to local mass effect rather than the dysfunction of the nerve, such as dysphagia, hoarseness, sore throat, and sleep apnea. CECT is often first examination followed by MR. CECT is useful for depicting vascularization but is quite unsatisfactory in delineation of internal structure. Since they are the masses of carotid space, they displace the parapharyngeal fat. When they are located at the nasopharyngeal level, the anterior lateral displacement of the styloid process is typical, whereas the lateral displacement of posterior belly of digastric is an important clue for oropharyngeal schwannoma. On MR, the best diagnostic clue is the lack of high-velocity flowers in T1-weighted images that differentiate them from glomus vagal paraganglioma. Gross total resection of the mass with preservation of the parent nerve is the treatment of choice for vagal schwannoma.